there, I'm Chris from Host Device, and welcome to this Q&A video where I'll be interviewing ChemiCloud themselves and getting answers to questions which you as a user will hopefully find helpful in knowing. Over the next 45 minutes or so, we'll find out more about the inside workings of ChemiCloud, where their main focus lies, and what the future has in store for them, plus a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Okay, John, thanks for joining us, finally. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me, Chris. Now, uh, obviously, just to kind of let's jump in and maybe with a little bit of an introduction about who you are first, just so then everybody who watches this will understand. Uh, so if you just want to introduce yourself real quick, that would be great. Yes, absolutely, Chris. Uh, so my name is John McMullen. Uh, I've been going by the call sign John MC for the better part of 30 years now. Uh, I started at a very young age when my uh, folks wanted me to find a job and move out. Uh, so I started working in a call center. Uh, that was back in 90, I'm going to say 98 or 99 now. And uh, so I started out in call centers uh, doing tier one, tier two support, uh, quickly moved up through supervisor and lead roles uh, and hopped a handful of companies before landing with an outsourced provider for web hosting. And that's where I really first started getting into that. Uh, so I started with a company called um, Hostworks, which uh, became Server Sitters, which became IP Geeks. And over that period, I would kind of developed the skills that I use today uh, in my work with ChemiCloud. Okay, okay, exactly. So with, uh, with ChemiCloud, so I, I guess in a way, it's a little bit of a strange one, like, Talking to somebody in the industry of web hosting, it's, you know, the majority of people are in these kind of traditional businesses, whereas web hosting, even though I guess it is traditional, it's maybe people don't really get to experience and speak to somebody in that industry very often, because <laughs> generally, like, if we just very quickly go into, like, the competitiveness of the uh, the web hosting situation, there is quite a lot of competition in this realm yes oh yes there certainly is we're in the process of climbing the ladder ourselves and uh right now it's, it's really interesting because everybody in the space is your competitor but yeah. there's absolutely no way you can kind of keep an eye on everybody all at once so you kind of have to look objectively and honestly at where you are in that segment and then you got to compete with those people all around you first and once you kind of come to the top of that, then you look at the next uh, ladder of, uh, I guess, opponents that you have to work your way through for sure. And do you find like staying competitive in this kind of niche, let's say, is it quite difficult? Because obviously, like everybody can pretty much provide similar services because there's only so many services when it comes to web hosting that you can provide. You just have to maybe package it differently and and things well, like that. yeah, definitely. So packaging products is one way to try and stay relevant or stay ahead of your competitors. We do keep an eye on what everybody's doing, but ultimately at the end of the day, what we understand that our customers want and the ones that come to us every day is they want added value. So anybody can read your website and see what you offer and compare you to other web hosts. And you're right, often uh, the case is, if not the price, then the services line up. And if not the services, then the price lines up. But there's always something like that. So you got to look for the bells and whistles. We try to hold conversations with people uh, a little bit more than just letting our website speak for itself. And we find out what people want, and we kind of speak to that. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it can be whether we're adding new features, dropping our price, or running a sale, something like that. So to stay competitive, it's really a mix of, uh, you know, features and price and just not being ignorant to what the other folks are doing because, you know, somebody might have a really good idea out there that we never even thought of. And we're willing to, you know, to take a look at that and see if it's something that might apply to us or our customers too. Yeah, no, exactly. I think generally, like you say, when you, when you research like the um, different kind of web hosting providers, again, price is now it seems one of the biggest one of the biggest things you know there's always offers always discounts and things like this but generally like you say there are some really cool features and tools that i've seen kind of in the industry which can also be used and kind of like leveraged as well 
Um, but okay, so we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but I want to just jump in there with those questions. Uh, but generally, tell me, first up, how long have you been in this industry, in this whole kind of hosting game? I moved into web hosting specifically. Uh, it was 2023. Uh, a little bit before that, uh, the company that became IP Geeks, one of the my roommates at the time actually had founded the company. So they worked in a call center doing other work, and they had a small web hosting division. Anyway, this group of people uh, that I was associated with decided that they wanted to micro niche and just do web hosting. Uh, so I helped them get set up. I uh, configured all their computers and their network for them, but I left it all alone. I was hands off. I was happy with my other call center job. I just wanted to see my friends succeed. A few years later, they uh, they came knocking and said, listen, we, we really want you to do a little bit more <laughs> than what you did a few years ago. And I said, oh, yeah. And they said, yeah, we want you to take everything you're doing for ISPs, which is what I was supporting at the time, and we want you to turn it on web hosting. I said, okay, I had no idea what that meant. Uh, so I started uh, doing web hosting. That was 04, I think, uh, when I really officially got hired on uh, at Service Sitters there. And uh, within two years, I had gone from doing tier one and two support to doing all their outbound sales, client management, lifecycle management. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and from that, it was just in the midst of a recession, we had a huge need to stay alive as a company. And uh, so I just decided to take the reins and built out what eventually people call business development rules these days uh, but back in the day it was very much the wild west okay and just again going a little bit digressing a little bit here but just a question came to me right there you just mentioned actually during the recession obviously staying alive during that period was you know a little bit tough but mm -hmm. just a more kind of recent time just going to the pandemic just purely out of curiosity what was it like for you guys in the web hosting game? Because obviously everything went online. So I'm assuming this was a great time for you or? Yeah, it's funny because uh, you've seen all of these businesses and governments really shifting their focus in order to try and stay ahead of the pandemic, which was a problem in, in real life for pretty much everybody. Online businesses like ourselves, web hosting, though, we really did start to kind of pick up a little bit of steam. More people than ever now are working from home. As you can see, I'm working from home right now, and I love it. Um, I've done this off and on for about 10 years. Uh, it's great. Um, but more and more people are joining me at their own homes. And uh, so part of that is you need online presence so people are buying websites to represent their businesses in ways that they didn't need to when they were brick and mortar and then on the other side of it too uh there's a lot of blogging going on now i find more and more people have stories to tell or things they want to share with one another whether it's recipes uh minecraft firms or whatever and uh you know, the only place that you're going to really reliably do that is with, a, you know, a good, strong web host. So we've been seeing a lot of interest from people that just want to have a mom and pop business or a blog. Those are probably the two biggest ones now. OK, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, the blogging is still so large, you know. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. OK, so exactly. As bad as the kind of pandemic was it has accelerated things so much faster when it comes to the whole online space oh yeah it's absolutely crazy um but when we talk about for example like the infrastructure and the data centers that chemi cloud has mm -hmm. what's what's the kind of deal with those what kind of like um security procedures do you guys have in place how do you guys manage it you know? Well, we, we manage it a couple of ways. Uh, back to what we were talking about earlier about features and prices, which are the two big things that everybody wants. Um, security and uptime are probably the unspoken need that everybody has. And especially if you're running a business, if you're selling stuff online. Um, I don't know about you, but I purchase on Amazon and a handful of uh, you know independent online stores all the time for different things. Um, and anytime those sites are down, uh, if it's something I'm trying out for the first time, I'll go find a competitor. Yeah, so we, 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 like I know firsthand from shopping all the time online for things for my son or my family, myself, you, uh, you absolutely need to be online. So we uh, partnered, this was before my time with Chemi Cloud, but we uh, made an amazing move and partnered with Linode, uh, who are now part of Akamai. 
uh, as our data center partner, and they are amazing. They offer some of the best uptime we've ever seen, like where we, we don't even have to put our hands on it most of the time to keep things running, which yeah. is fantastic. Uh, all of their servers are powered by AMD Epic processors with up to 96 cores, which we can pass on to our clients if they really need something that powerful. Um, you know, so we've got that. And then on top of, you know, the great hardware that they provide, we also have Cloud Linux, Lightspeed, Mail Channels, cPanel, and Immunify 360 that all kind of create like a little bit of a perfect storm of uh, security that customers and us can use to enact, you know, extra uptime or resolve situations on those servers and sites. Uh, and then, of course, if a site still breaks, if somebody's code goes wrong or something, we've got Jet Backup too, and we offer that to every customer as well with up to, I think, 30 days of backups. Um, and I think it's even more customizable for VPS. So yeah, we really, really don't want anybody's sites to go down. So we just said, you know, it's going to cost us a little bit to do it. We take a hit on our margins, but we also don't get complaints. So yeah. part of the trade-off, it's, it's very worth it to us to, uh, to have that. And generally, when we talk about this whole uptime, because if you look on, you know, many different hosting providers, this is kind of the one feature they always, you know, post about, okay, incredible uptimes, 99.9%. .9%. However, how in nowadays, how often does this kind of downtime really happen? Because for myself, going on websites, I, I can't honestly say that I've really seen it at all. Obviously, now it could be because everybody's you know, technology is better and they're all paying that bit extra for this supreme uptime. But generally, is it actually really such a problem? Like, or was it a problem a few years ago? It, it was a few years ago, absolutely. Um, some of the folks that I work with here at Kenny Cloud, I've worked with in other businesses as well over the years doing support. Uh, one of those companies who will rename, remain unnamed at this time <laughs> Uh, offered a great uptime guarantee, but one thing I remembered uh, underneath of that platform was that we were paying out the guarantee every month to a handful of customers, whether it was on the same server or different servers. It was a really regular problem, and I mean, it was great that we were backing it up and paying customers back or crediting their accounts to cover for the downtime, but those people didn't want credits. They wanted uptime. Yeah. So now when i talk about this this is like six eight maybe almost 10 years ago now so a lot has changed uh for one i mean Linode has kind of moved its way up the ranks in that time uh so you know there's companies like them uh as well that are also really putting this push on uptime um i haven't seen us have to pay out a uh, a customer on uptime here at chemi cloud and i've been on with the company for Coming on to a year now, but a little over half a year, I think. So uh, zero, zero uptime payouts in six months, seven months is really good. Uh, if we can keep that going till I hit a year, I'll be really happy. <laughs> um, you know, just not that we don't want to pay customers back. We just don't want to have to have them angry and, and needing that in the first place. So, yeah. I, I, mean, I think you're right. Like customers don't really care about the compensation. It's more the fact that they just want the service their purchase you know um, and obviously they want it to work smoothly even though it probably isn't always possible um, but generally you know that smoothness is what they're paying for uh, and when it comes to kind of smoothness um, obviously you know a lot of providers offer different levels of customer support and things like this mm -hmm. when, when it comes to chemi cloud what can most people expect in regards to customer support the way that they can contact you, fast responses, what, what can they expect from you guys? Okay, so uh, first we'll talk about methods people can reach us. Uh, we have two primary methods, uh, help desk tickets or emails. Uh, for customers, it often just looks like an email, uh, but we have a help desk system that we track all of that in. Uh, so that's the first way uh, that people can reach us. They can reach us through their control panel via email, or they can receive responses from us and track those that way. We also have a live chat system, uh, which is probably the most popular method people use to contact us, because if you need us live, if you have an issue or an emergency, generally you want to talk to someone straight away. So both of those are manned 24-7 by live humans. Uh, I know a lot of uh, chat systems are run by bots these days. 
And we yep. had the option of doing that too, but uh, just like uptime, people really like to have a human to connect to on the other side. So we've kind of doubled down on that as well. It's a, that's a, a thing that has held true, like especially for me over the last like 25 years of doing this is that um, people always want to talk to people. It doesn't matter how big or small their problem is, it always feels a lot easier to solve when you know you've got a person on the other side of that. So, you know, we make our support open 24 seven and we have three internal levels that we work with. We don't generally brand them tier one, tier two and tier three, but that's what they amount to. Okay. Um, we have our chat agents or our, our customer service agents that do all of our level one support. So they'll answer all your billing questions, all your minor technical issues, all your use cases for the uh, client panel or for the C panel that we offer and the different tools. So everybody on our team kind of has to be a product expert on that stuff. Um, if they can't solve an issue or if we de deem that the issue is going to take too long to solve for that agent, we'll move it up to what's traditionally called like tier two. And so tier two people do everything that you might imagine tier two does. Like for all those non-hosting people watching this right now, they're the people that, you know, click all the buttons and go in on the command line and they make permissions changes or they'll clear out uh, stuck mail servers or unblock IPs. And, okay. and so like remote support where they can literally dive in and take care of it for you in a way. Yeah, absolutely. And then after that, our engineers uh, also help out with things, our coders. Uh, so if there's something that's a little bit more advanced, they'll hop in in a tier three capacity. And then, of course, Linode and all of the people that we partner with, if anybody can help with the situation, if it escalates to that point, we'll coordinate directly with our sources. So there's really four levels, but three of them are internal and they're all staffed by our own people. And they're all 24 seven or is that all 24 seven. Okay. And you haven't been, you haven't been inclined to switch over to the chat bots now that the whole chat GPT is out and it's all like in the spotlight right now. We, we will explore it when it looks really good right now. Yeah. It feels to me like a novelty. Um, and again, you know, as novel as it might be, it still doesn't replace that person to person. Uh, I had a chat with uh, just, you know, checking out a piece of software the other day. I checked out uh, something and there was a chat uh, that was AI powered. Okay. I lasted 30 seconds on that before I said, no, I want to just ask a question. I need a person to answer this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me asking questions and being regurgitated KB articles just didn't feel <laughs> proper it didn't feel right uh so i mean it might feel right someday i mean i'm never going to say no to an opportunity but it has to really look promising before we start thinking about adjusting how we do business exactly i i'm still at the point of right now i, I find it's like a glorified wikipedia you know yeah. all it can really do is take facts from the internet and kind of make them slightly personalized but still it, it can't really solve major problems i i wouldn't say so even though like right now it is in the spotlight like, even if you look on youtube it's everywhere right now and um, but no i'm still uh there, there's still some way to go i would say oh yeah absolutely uh and actually in regards so we already basically covered this um but in regards to your uptime but also your performance as well so the mm -hmm. packages that customers are buying are you are you guys actually able to offer guarantees as well? So I know you mentioned about you know you offer compensation and you pay out customers if there's downtime, um, but are you able to offer like real tangible guarantees? Oh yeah, our uh, our uptime SLA. So it's a, it's an actual legal document and everything that we have like that backs up what we can do, and that's ninety nine point nine nine percent uptime. So. I'm pretty sure that you could be talking a handful of minutes in a month would hit a trigger on that uptime uh, guarantee. So, yeah, and, and I mean, we, we need that to be taken seriously because, again, we're not just looking at the bloggers and we're not looking at people that might not look at certain details like a guarantee as closely. There's yep. businesses, all kinds of businesses online, and, again, back when they talk about uptime and stuff, Yes, we rely on 
uh, Linode and their Epic processors. We also have NVMe SSDs installed because they're more reliable, have amazing data transfer, and they're super reliable. They don't break down as much as traditional spinning hard drives. We use KGFS to keep everybody's accounts on even shared servers separated so that if like you and I had a site on there and say I had a site full of viruses because I was just a terrible website owner and you yeah. had a website on the same server, my site might end up having all kinds of memory errors because I was uh, bad about it, but yours will work just fine. So I could be pulling right. down all the CPU and RAM on my site, but it won't affect somebody else's. So that was a huge part of it too. So with those things, everything else I mentioned earlier, plus a DDoS a service that we provide to everybody, so everybody gets free DDoS protection. So, I mean, you know, besides that, uh, there's not really a whole lot else we can do uh, besides keep an eye on things. So we monitor 24-7 uh, with our own people, <laughs> again, and uh, that helps us to back up that 99.99 uh, SLA for the uptime. Because, okay. again, we want people that need it to be able to just see a tangible, okay, this is for real, and then if they want to stress test it, we have IPs for all of our servers online that people can check speeds and latency, all that. And they have no problem uh, letting people prove it first. And if they still want a little bit more, I have no problem telling them about our money back guarantee as well, which we offer 45 days on all our shared products, which I think might be leading the industry. Um, so yeah, like we, we really are very happy putting our money where our mouth is. If somebody yeah. wants to give us a shot, I guarantee you they'll they'll be happy with the result. Yeah, generally, like like you say, um, I think the majority or the ones that do offer the money back guarantee normally, what I've seen is like thirty days maximum. Yeah. So the forty five days is that bit more. Uh, yeah, because I haven't seen that actually before. It's normally just the thirty days that I've seen. Um, but okay, and obviously, like you say, it's not just the uh, mum and pop stores or the um, the kind of blog owners, but it's also bigger businesses. Mm -hmm. But generally, I'm I'm assuming probably the majority of like customers or clientele is more like the small and medium sized businesses rather than these kind of larger ones. Yeah, what, absolutely, exactly. And a lot of these they want to know about you know they want to be able to optimize their site because it's all well and great having a site these days, but you know how many how many um rankings are there on the first page of google like 13 12 or 13 or something like that yeah so they all want to you know to be optimized with like seo they all want these tools and functions about what kind of performance they're getting and that kind of stuff is that something that chemi cloud also offers or, or what kind of tools and performance analytics do you guys offer there Okay, so we, uh, as you may know, we're a cPanel web host, which is the the leading platform in uh, hosting, at least in North America. I think Plesk is kind of leading in Europe, but that kind of shifts with the tides. Uh, anyway, we're talking about cPanel, <laughs> and uh, cPanel is awesome. I've been supporting it now for since they incepted actually it was about 08 09 uh when the other leading platform got kicked to the bottom by cpanel and we've i've been supporting them ever since so we've seen quite a, a huge upswing in their capabilities uh just over time myself and a number of our uh, colleagues that have been in the business about as long as me um and so i mean first off cpanel offers all kinds of uh installers and tools we've got it configured with a soft oculus i believe installer so we have a one-click wordpress installer we also have all kinds of configurations and things available for it to optimize it just like you're saying people that uh start a wordpress site they do if they want to be noticed they need to consider seo they need to consider um their paragraphs their images everything that goes into it so there's all kinds of plugins that come in uh we can pre-install a lot of them and uh people can use those we also use uh, whmcs as our back end so that's the billing system for uh, that kind of goes hand in hand with cpanel and every customer gets an interface through that as well to manage their account so that's where they'll open up support requests view their services they have with us, upgrade, downgrade, or scale if need be, and things like that. Uh, so we offer those two are the, the two main vehicles that our customers uh, use for everything. Inside their cPanel, the bulk of customers that are building new websites today, I find are using WordPress. 
So again, that's super easy, one-click installer with configs and everything. Um, yeah, I'd say that's probably the bulk of it there. And then with cPanel comes a flurry of uh, analytics, AW stats, and, and whatnot that people can use to track all of their performance as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, exactly, because I think like nowadays, whereas you know a few years ago, it used to be you needed some knowledge or expertise to build a website. Nowadays, it's every Tom, Dick, and Harry can have the ability to build a website. Yes, um, some kind of knowledge, but generally anybody can now do it. And again, with all of this SEO and the different plugins that you guys offer, the cPanels offer, it's super, yeah, it makes it so easy for anybody now to, like you say, create a blog website, get it to start ranking and things like that. It, it is easy for anybody to uh, to put a site up, it's true, but there are, I find, um, like we were talking a, a moment ago, just there there are some things that people still don't know they need. So like, let's say you install WordPress, you may not know the value of the keyword tools that are built into your posts when you're making them. Yeah. So there are some things that we'll actually go above and beyond, and this I didn't touch on with the support, uh, but we do. When time permits, uh, we'll do things that aren't considered by most hosts under what they call a scope of support. And what that kind of refers to is when you have a problem with your website and you reach out to tech support for help with that problem, you're going to get help with whatever part of the problem your web host uh, believes they support. So, for instance, if you have an error on your website, your support might go and say, okay, we found the error. It's being caused by this file. And then it stops right there, and then the tone changes. And then the next thing they say is, so you're going to need to go and take a look at that file to correct the problem. And that might be the end of the support you receive. Okay. Now, with, uh, with what we do, we've seen this time and time again. Like I said, I've worked in call centers, so I've seen literally millions of phone calls and uh, tens of thousands of tickets that resolved in that way. And I mean... According to the rules of the companies, yeah, that's fine. That's that's the rule. But uh, again, like I was talking, features, bells and whistles, and, and extra care are, are ways that you can kind of win customers over or help them see or uh, realize uh, a solution to a problem that they can't solve themselves. Not everybody that brings a website to us has a developer. It's the, the big thing. So when somebody doesn't know what they're doing or just needs an extra hand and they say, you know, I'm having this 503 error, maybe we've located the file and we've discovered that it's a missing closed bracket or something simple like that. Well, we'll go and fix it. We'll identify the file for the customer so that they know which file it was and tell them, okay, this is what we did on this line. So that if you ever see that specific error again, you can go take a look for it yourself. Or if you get stuck, just let us know. Um, it's not something that we offer as a service. It's not advertised on our website and we don't blog about it because it's, it's more about our culture as a company than it is about what we're doing as a, a sellable service. Because the moment you frame it that way, then people start growing a different expectation. And we don't want to grow an expectation. Yeah. We just want the customers that need support to learn to understand that they can rely on us for just about anything at all, even if it isn't something that a web host should support. If we can take a crack at it, we will. Because right. what, what's, uh, what's the employee range at Kemi Cloud right now? Like roughly how big is the company? Right now, I believe we're just cresting 20 staff. So it's just a little over that. So we're definitely small and growing. Exactly, but the support you guys are giving and, you know, all of that support, all of those features are something of a, you know, a 500 plus employee company, you know, so it's, it's impressive that you guys are offering that much for a small company. Well, it's, it, it all goes back again to the people and the people really are the heart and soul of our company. Um, so the folks that brought me on are decade plus uh, web hosting people, the people in our support team, I know three of them personally from other jobs, and they're all amazing, much more technical than myself, even tech people. Now, I've done tier two and all this, you know, in depth at the shell level support. But I mean, when that recession hit and we needed a salesperson at my company, I 
put tech secondary on my personal kind of manifest. Yep. And and that allowed all these people that were working alongside me to just rocket past. They've got all these amazing skills and things that they can do with a, a shell that, uh, you know, I was once upon a time just kind of dabbling in that. Um, but yeah, the, the, the support team are just tremendous with what they're capable of doing. But the reason we can offer what we do and all the care that we do is through experience. It's all just years of seeing what hasn't worked, what has worked, and just adapting that to kind of like our game in all of this. Yeah, okay, awesome. And regarding obviously like looking back at, yeah, what has worked and what hasn't worked. Now we mentioned earlier, the biggest competitive advantage, I would say most of these hosting platforms provide is they, they leverage pricing a lot. Like you log on today, it'll be one price. You log on tomorrow, it'll be another price. Mm -hmm. it, it, to be honest, for me, it's kind of even, you know, when you search for flights, you search on one IP, it's one price. You search again on that same IP, it's even higher. You know, it's, <laughs> I, I find it very similar to that with the hosting platforms. There's always a different discount. Um, yes. There, so there how do you guys deal with this whole, the pricing, the discounts, the kind of, the billing, the promotions, what, how do you guys manage and deal with that? Well, uh, I think that uh, we deal with it in two ways, really. We deal with it internally and then we deal with it externally. Um, so internally is a lot of research, finding out what our competitors are doing and then wondering how can we do this ourselves. And then paired with that uh, internally again is, and this is me, is I reach out to all the people that we buy pieces of our company from like because we offer domain registration we offer server space we do this and that and that anybody that we work with uh i work to maintain those relationships just the same way i do with our customers with the vendors that help make us who we are mm -hmm. um, and every time that we find a breakthrough with a, a partner then we will translate that into something that we can offer to our customers and that's where the external part of what we do comes in so we see what everybody's buying we look at the, the trends and the analytics and we see okay maybe more people right now are hungry for price than they are for everything else so we'll talk to our marketing team and we'll kind of market with a a price driven approach so the uh the other answer to your question there you said how do we deal with the uh all the people offering deals all the time Exactly. It's, we, we have to play that yeah. game too. At the end of the day, that's exactly the truth. Uh, it sucks in the sense that we're being bottlenecked into somebody else's game. But the truth of the matter is by getting into that and, and doing it ourselves, we get to see what is and isn't working for everybody else. And we can determine what we're going to do for ourselves. So we, we've been lucky. We've been just taking we use everything as an opportunity that's the the first most important thing is even a customer that says no after i've written back to them to answer all their questions okay yeah. well why was it no okay and then i'll go and use that because you never know like there's all kinds of perspective out there that isn't mine and uh the only way that we were able to get successful and the only way we'll stay successful is to continue being adaptive so we'll offer sales uh just like everybody else we market uh accordingly to that stuff and the trends and then everything that i get translates back to deals for our customers so i can tell you about two of them that we did recently yeah. uh, one is so we have four reseller packages and previously uh only the two top end ones got whmcs for free with it now that's a, a paid license that we have to get from uh, WHMCS. So we take the hit on that for those two larger plans, mm -hmm. but for the two smaller ones, we haven't historically offered it. Uh, and we just recently unveiled that for our grow plan, which is our second smallest reseller plan. Uh, so they never had access to it before. It was an add on that was costing whatever we charge for WHMCS license, like between 12 and $16. So, you know, huge savings for those resellers on the grow plan. Now people on a budget who want to just start out as a reseller have access to the best tools. And then the other one that we did uh, was with our registration partners. We were able to uh, to change uh, the terms of how we deal with inbound transfers. 
Previously, we could give a small discount to people bringing in their domains, and now we're doing it absolutely free, um, which is a 400% improvement over uh, two months ago, um, where people were getting a 25% cut off of their bill. We were able to uh, to leverage a full free domain. Now, this only counts for people buying annual plans or better. We can't give a monthly person a free domain. But uh, we've always been giving a free registration for one year with the uh, hosting. But now yep. we can offer a transfer instead, which is a huge plus for people who have existing businesses and don't want to incur a second cost in order to move their domain over. So, yeah. And regarding the, the contract plans, how Ooh. what kind of long term? So you mentioned monthly and yearly. Is that as far as you guys go? Because I've seen some hosts. In, okay, because some hosts I've seen like, you know, sign you up to a contract for like three years, four years, like for some really long periods. So we offer on our site, we have monthly and then we do one, two and three year plans. And we also have a few different strategies for folk that want even longer plans. So if somebody wants a plan that's longer than what we advertise, then they'll come to us and explain what they need. And we will either build up something custom or we'll give them a set of steps that will allow them to basically buy a three-year plan and maybe renew it straight away uh, with a renewal discount if we have such that we can offer. And then that will allow them to stretch out the plan at whatever the rate is that they're looking at and things like that. So this goes back to the whole conversation thing because that's really a custom need. Somebody who comes in for hosting, unless they're doing some sort of, you know, long-term vision they don't need more than three years of hosting yeah. at that point either there's surfing for a huge discount or they have you know a long-term goal for their business and i'm more interested in the latter if they have a long-term goal for their business i want to find out what it is what they think they need why and then offer whatever insights i can based on my experience and that of my team and if we can find a you know what they really need Maybe they need that long term, but maybe they need something more that shows commitment from us. Then we'll give them that. Uh, we don't offer phone support, but I'll actually call customers all the time. Uh, it's something that we don't, again, advertise on our site because we don't want everybody who doesn't need a phone call just asking for one. Yeah. But if you need something or if you have a, like, sometimes a conversation can't just be resolved over text. You can't get the nuance or the feelings that somebody has. So if somebody has something that's super complicated, we'll do a Google Meet with them or I have a Skype account and I'll make a phone call to their number and we'll just sit down and, and hash out whatever it is they need. Um, and I mean, I try to uh, approach it people first as well. It's always, well, what do you need? It's not, what can we give you? Because if, they, if they're already showing interest in us, I don't have to try and generate that. I just want to find out what they want and treat them well. And, and that's another thing that's really worked in our benefit. Okay, fantastic. And just for all the, like, let's say newbies who are going into the hosting, when it comes to these durational plans, um, just to kind of hear it from you and hear possibly the truth. Um, so obviously you have the monthly, then the one, two, three years. Why, what's the reason that people are willing to sign up for three years? Is it purely just for the, then they know, for example, when it comes up to renewal, for example, if a one year person signed up and at renewal stage, then the price, there's a chance the price could be higher. Mm -hmm. Is it is it mainly just that reason why people are willing to also sign up for three years? Because then, then they know, OK, this is a, a stable price during the whole three years. What, what What's the reasoning behind that? Just purely out of curiosity. Well, that's the thing. And I've asked. Uh... I'd say probably a couple dozen people just this year alone, uh, why they are so interested in a three-year term. Yeah. And I'm going to say that 60% of them, it's money. It's they want to save as much as they possibly can because they're either confident that they're going to do the thing for three years or they just, they want the best value, right? A lot of people after that value, oh, 70% off over three years, that's great. And that, by the way, is our current offer. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so people love that. They're like, okay, so I'm saving a lot of money. And I mean, three years at that percentage off, a lot of customers are going to save 
uh, like compared to monthly, one year at a monthly fee might be the same as three years at that uh, rate. So like there's huge savings. That's got to be the number one reason people are doing it. They've even told me. But for the rest of them, it's just I know what I'm doing. I don't want to have to move around. And a small subset of those people have moved hosts two and three and four times. Uh, I answer all our trust pilot reviews right now. And uh, more often than not, the, the repeat uh, reviewers are often saying, I'm just tired of uh, moving. And Kevin Cloud has treated me so well that, you know, re renewal costs be damned. And I love that because not that I want to get the full price. I mean, it's nice, but it's more important to know that we're making that impact with people. Everything that we're doing is supposed to be people first. That's the whole point of me being here. And when people say, yeah, I'm staying with you, I don't care about the renewal price, it means that we're getting through on that connection. Um, now, that's not to say we don't offer renewal discounts. Uh, we just had one at Black Friday where we gave people almost half off their uh, service to renew with us, which is something that I haven't seen across the, uh, the industry either. So it's just another one of those things that we're trying to do that sets us apart. Because most people, like all the, uh, the big guns out there in hosting, they love to get that initial discounted customer in and then triple, quadruple charge them or whatever it is at renewal rate. Yes, we operate under a similar model, but we do try to make that effort to give our loyal customers just another reason to consider sticking on with us. Because sometimes maybe those customers didn't find the connection they needed with us. So price might be their biggest thing. Like the world is made of so many people and we have thousands of customers using one strategy to keep everybody happy probably a foolhardy kind of endeavor so you know we'll stick to discounting where we can we offer amazing support and service where we can we'll always use the best hardware where we can you know things like yeah. that yeah i honestly i think that's that's great and that one thing that i hate with a lot of businesses these days is the fact that new customers always seem to come first with the discounts but then when mm -hmm. it comes to renewal this is with so many businesses now oh Even yeah customers have pretty much zero privileges and it just doesn't make sense uh, <laughs> it really doesn't make sense so the fact that you're you know offering the discounts on renewal and that kind of stuff is of course a massive benefit compared to a lot of the other providers out there so that's yeah that's pretty decent and now i think i know the answer to this one already uh but let's say for example i sign up to um one of the plans and for example you know a little while down the road six months for example i want to upgrade because you know my website or my requirements get bigger um this is something you guys offer yes absolutely we definitely offer uh, upgrades we have scale at every level so whether it's shared and wordpress hosting reseller or vps uh, we have a scale path for each and every one of them with a uh, shared hosting which again is probably the most popular one at least right now uh shared and wordpress hosting packages we offer uh we have four different levels we have uh starter pro uh maybe we have three i'm not looking at it right <laughs> now but uh with those yeah turbo starter pro and turbo we have three of those and four resellers my apologies so with each of those plans, you can uh, you get like one, two, or three CPUs and gigs of RAM with it. So if you're starting out a new project, uh, especially something that's WordPress, we recommend going on Pro. But if you're really bare bones, you start on Starter, build up, and move to Pro, and then move to Turbo. Uh, generally, after Turbo, people are looking at reseller or VPS to get the uh, res resources they need. But we've created two add-ons for our um, Turbo plan specifically. One uh, adds 200 uh, gigs or some 20 gigs of disk space and 200,000 inodes so that they can balloon out their site without having to you know add space or upgrade otherwise and then we also have a performance uh, one which doubles their cpu and ram from three and three to six and six uh, which at that point makes their shared hosting comparable to you know the first couple levels of our vps at a fraction of the cost they don't have to move or migrate or put in a ticket to do any of that. They just go purchase the add-on and it's immediately applied to their account. And if they only need it for uh, 
you know, a small amount of time, like maybe they're just dealing with a Christmas rush for sales, they can discontinue it once they're done. We're fine with that too. It's really a la carte, it's, it's scale when you need it. Um, okay. For resellers, we offer the same sort of add-ons that do performance boosting. Plus we have the four plans that they can scale through. And then VPS is just fully customizable right out of the gates. You can choose your operating system, your web handler, your mail protection, backups, um, your, uh, you know, obviously the strength of your server, whether it's, you know, one CPU or a bunch. And then after everything that we offer on our website, we, again, we encourage VPS customers with serious businesses to reach out and have a conversation because we can scale VPS far past what's available on our website. Okay, so exactly. So for those like custom customers, it is best to actually reach out to you guys first, depending on what their needs are, obviously to discuss it. And you guys can always come up with some kind of solution or absolutely some kind of best practice. Yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Nice. And in regards to scalability, you kind of did just mention this, but I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. So even though, okay, I can upgrade as I go. But then, of course, scaling back down when needed is also a kind of possibility. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Scaling down is also a possibility. It's a, The process is a little different. When you scale up, you just order the change, right? Yeah. But when you're scaling down, this, again, brings our people back into it, which we're very happy to do because we can make sure if somebody's scaling down, we can take a look at those resources with them and say, Okay, yeah, it looks like your CPU and RAM are way down. I don't see any reason why we couldn't scale you down for a bit. But sometimes a customer doesn't see what they uh, what they really need. So we'll put a, a set of eyes on it too and just make sure everything's golden. Then we'll proceed with the downgrade. We'll do that through a ticket. And then that way we're also kind of accountable to the customer to make sure that that downgrade or that downscale goes yep. according to plan. Because the last thing we want to do is just take somebody's request uh, blind and make a change and then you know cause them more problems we never want to cause problems for our customers so we do thorough checks of everything even just migrating in websites i should mention that briefly too we'll actually scan uh, existing websites for issues and we let our customers we invite them to tell us about problems on their websites and still migrate them over to us and we'll resolve those issues during the migration so that when the sites land on our side, they come problem free. We'll scrub all the problems, viruses or whatever, right out. Uh, and, and again, it's just to, our, our taglines everywhere are about making hosting easy. And we really, really want to do that. So that means we have to put in that extra effort and that's fine. Nice. No, I, I do like how you guys really go for the people first approach. Uh, because you know it, it's great going for the you know money or price first, but it, it doesn't really get you anywhere in the long run. And no. obviously, Kemi Cloud has been around for quite some time now, so you guys are doing something right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and then, if we look into the future, obviously, with the you know we discussed about the whole pandemic as well, but obviously that sped up different technologies, different processes. But now, if we look even more into the future because even though like the the pandemic is essentially over now people are still the work from home situation is still real you know you oh yeah it's still the option to work from home is something that's there and i think now it's something that the majority of the world are like well why do i even need to go to an office you know i just don't need to uh, my productivity is still good at home so and i think businesses are realizing this as, as well whether they're going to end up downgrading their office space, who knows? Um, but what does the future look like for Kenny Cloud? What kind of, you know, best practices or new features and tools do you guys have in the pipeline, if you have any? Well, uh, we do have some things in the pipeline right now for our um, for our customers. We're actually always researching new offers. Uh, so once we're done with this meeting, I'm going to be going out and doing some contact with some vendors to see uh, just where things sit now. Cause the last time I talked to them was just around Christmas time, which is a lovely time to talk to people just to, you know, to be personal with them, but uh, not a great time to get a lot of business done. So yeah. now 
things have kind of settled down from Christmas and we're kind of heading into the spring season. We'll be launching spring sales soon. So it's the perfect time to talk with the people we work with, see where things have grown to since our last talk and see what we can offer. Right now, my best guess is we'll be looking at our springtime sales will be our next offer. As far as features, we did just launch the two that I mentioned. So now we'll want to go to the drawing board and just make sure that the next thing we do is going to offer a similar value or better value than what we have now. So I couldn't speak to, you know, a specific thing we're going to do until I know how it's going to work. So, I mean, yeah. I could say, oh, we're going to do this or that, but it could look completely foreign to anything I say, even in just a couple of weeks time, stuff moves so fast. So, we, you know, we just keep on our eyes on the technology, see what we like. Um, and then if something's going to work, then we'll research the hell out of it. And then we'll turn it into something. Exactly. Do you guys find it hard to, is it a tough job to keep up to date? Because obviously, like we said, like the amount of competition out there, is it tough to stay on top of that? Like To, to see stay if... on top of everything? Yes. Yeah. But uh, there's a few ways that we can kind of, skirt the edges and keep our eye on uh, everything that feels most important to us. Um, for me, it's social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, everybody in our industry is either putting snippets or offers or deals or features out on these platforms all the time, generating buzz for their brands. And we do a bit of that ourselves. But that's a, it's, it's a really good place to see what's coming down the pipes for all these companies. Uh, on top of that is just going to their websites directly. So I've got a folder full of competitor sites or a folder full of uh, vendor sites and all of these different things. And I'll go through them and just see what their news is or get their newsletters and see where they're at with different things. Because there might be something that will benefit our customers there. We're not here to do a shooting match with anybody. We're just happy focusing on ourselves. But uh, we, we do need to know what everybody's up to in order to know if we're on the right path or not. So, yeah, so social media, I think, is my biggest place for finding that. But everybody on our team has their own kind of way. Um, so for me, it's social media and then just following all these sites directly. I've worked in and amongst, like I, like I mentioned earlier, call center work. Uh, I've worked with thousands of web hosts and thousands of ISPs uh, all over the world. Um, so I kind of have had a chance to build up a sort of almost a Rolodex of ideas and brands that I should keep an eye on, the ones that are industry leaders, the ones that were industry leaders, because even if it's not a matter of finding things that are going to work, we can find out what has not worked for people so that we can avoid that too. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Generally, that's, uh, I think a ton of information about ChemiCloud. Uh, <laughs> we've been going for about 45 minutes or so. So oh, wow. just before we kind of finish up, mm -hmm. let's just, obviously ChemiCloud is quite a small, you know, uh, a small company. So just to get some more details on you yourself. Um, sure. So obviously you've already mentioned a few of these. You come from the whole call center background. Uh, but exactly what was your kind of previous occupation before ChemiCloud, before entering the whole web hosting industry? Before entering the web hosting industry, yes, I did work for call centers. Uh, so I got out of high school. My uh, folks saw a call center job and they drove me to an interview. Uh, so that was supporting internet service providers. And I didn't put this in the, uh, in the interview questions that we were discussing. <laughs> but uh, when I tested for my first call center job at online support, which was later bought by Hajinda Global, um, the, uh, the question on their test that stuck out most for me was name three uh, modem speeds. And being a complete neophyte to the internet at the time, I put down slow, medium, and whoa <laughs> as my answers. Because I had no clue about, uh, I just knew how to talk to people. I didn't know anything about the internet, uh, internet providers, which was what I was interviewing for. Uh, but I nailed the essay questions on the other side, which were all about how do you treat people. And that's was what got me into doing IT, getting me into any sort of career at all. So I started doing call center work with uh, online support. I moved from 
tier one to tier two to tier two liaison where I did dealt with all the data centers to supervisor and team lead. So I was responsible for the people inside the company by the time I left there. When I left there, I went to another call center. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I was really good at it. So I, I just kept, I, I just worked kept in a call center. <laughs> I was in a call center. I remember when I was in Australia for like six months. That was it. It, it was basically uh, dealing with business customers, recontracting their mobile phones and internet connections. Yeah. But it's, uh, I just couldn't take it. After the six months, it just becomes so repetitive and you're sitting in this little cage. And yeah, it, so for some people, it's great. <laughs> congratulations on six months. Back at the time that you did that, six months to 18 months was the average burnout rate for call center employees. Uh, I always pride myself on being somewhere around 22,000% of that. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's not a, a career that uh, calls to everybody. The, yeah. Everybody I find on this planet has different things they're suited to. Um, and if you're suited to doing something like customer service or call center work or doing tech support, then it can be super rewarding and not just repetitive. But yeah, it is, it is certainly, uh, it's a kind of a nichest industry like you need to be a niche person to fit in that niche industry i find exactly all, all i found obviously um at that time i remember we were working for like a, a third party company so mm -hmm. it was uh this, this company was called telstra uh they're like the phone network provider in australia okay uh, but we worked for a third party company who they outsourced the work to us when customers contracts came up for renewal we would then have to call them and try to get them to renew even though the deal was like they save like two dollars a month you still have to try and renew them on like a 24 month plan um, so but then of course the commissions come in and the commissions are fantastic don't get me wrong like the pay generally is great but you know that only lasts for so long until you're like nah i just i can't hack it any longer it's um so yeah, yeah. yeah. look at see and so from your own experience you're just telling me the same thing our customers end up revealing is that the the value the dollar money part of this only has so much weight at the end of the day because yeah. there's other things that you got to factor in and your human needs told you you needed to move on in your career and you know it, it's 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 completely translatable man absolutely yeah. no and uh with the web hosting industry how did you even become interested in this because it is a pretty complicated industry <laughs> like it's, it's quite complex it is it's a it's way more complex than the stuff i was doing prior so like i touched on earlier people started a web hosting support company in my town and i was roommates with one of the owners um so what ended up happening is the other call center i was working at uh, at the time it was online support and they had uh, moved to doing support for another product that wasn't isps and I wasn't comfortable with it. And I was told I would never have to do it. And then one day they said, you're going to do it. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and then I went and found my buddies that started that company. I said, hey, you got any room? I said, we're actually hiring a tier one agent right now, someone to do chats and phones. I said, I can do chats and phones. And then the rest was history. I went in, interviewed with them, went way better than that slow, medium, whoa one from uh, five or six years prior. And uh I got the job, did tier one for them for two years, did tier two for them for a year, and then the recession hit, and then I moved into sales. Okay. And you're yeah. enjoying it so far? Um, it has its ups and downs. I will say it that way. I don't like focusing on it as a sales job, uh, again, because I spent, I would say, easily half of my career just supporting people, and then the other half doing sales and business-to-business -business stuff. I approach all of my B2B work and all of my B2C work uh, the same way that I approach tech support work. I'm looking at needs, identifying problems, and finding solutions way more than I'm talking about dollars and cents, value prepositions, and all of that. Because at the end of the day, again, people can read up and Google that stuff online all day long. They don't need me to parrot it back. So instead, I tell them the things that they're missing. And uh, those are the things that close deals for me. Yeah, exactly. I think obviously in your situation, B 
been possibly like that smaller company, you have more flexibility. But yes. when you're in sales roles for bigger companies, it's all about KPIs, targets. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, kind of what drives this whole, this sales force to kind of, it's, some people love it. Some people love the sales and some people, the KPIs and targets becomes too much because, okay, you achieve it this month. Hey, next month is going to be higher. You know, there's, well, there's we still have targets and KPIs yeah. that matter. Absolutely. But again, that takes just a slight backseat to people yeah. because people, uh, if you treat them right, you can hit all your targets. And that, and that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're striving to do with this year. Um, so much coming down the pipes. It's going to be great. Yeah. OK. And uh, in regards to I already think I know the most rewarding aspect of your work. <laughs> you seem to be this whole people person and kind of just trying to help people. What would be, say, what do you find the most challenging? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it, it's also a people related thing. It's funny yeah. enough. Uh, <laughs> keeping everybody happy. Uh, it's probably the cheesiest sentiment you'll ever do in an interview <laughs> here with host advice. But I'll tell you, uh, it's impossible because, I mean, I've got the company on one side, customers on the other side, family and life events everywhere. And when you're doing this sort of job, you want your customers to be super happy so that they'll buy from you. You want your company happy because you got to hit those targets. And uh, it's it's impossible, but it's n it's not also impossible. Uh, like you said, I, I carry this people thing my whole life. And uh, to be really honest, all it is is marrying a customer's need to what the company can offer. And so when I try to uh, try to make that work, I just I put the company aside when I'm dealing with the customer and I just look after their needs. That's uh, the most challenging part. And when it works is when it's probably the most rewarding. Um, and even though I approach this in my own unique way, it's still a numbers game. There's a lot of people that are coming to us just yeah. for information or whatever. Um, so separating myself from those, that's uh, I think every salesperson or anybody who does B2B and B2C, like, you know, it's, it's really throwing darts at a board and seeing what sticks. Um, so yeah, trying to please everybody and remembering not to internalize when something doesn't work out. Those are the two biggest, uh, challenges that uh, I would say I face, but again, just, you know, approaching it and sticking true to, uh, to what I do as a, you know, a person and in a position like this helps me not to be, you know, weighed down or to hold on to it for too long. Yeah. And do you find any times that, you're in that position, like you're trying to help. And like you say, you're just trying to marry the customer to the company services. Do you ever find you're in a position where it's just not something you can offer? You know, the services that this company wants are just not something that ChemiCloud can physically offer? Yes, because absolutely. And uh, I'd be remiss to lie and say, oh, no, I can solve every problem. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, no, I'm going to take that back. I can solve every problem. <laughs> the way I do it is by not limiting myself. Uh, so I've had people that have come to me and saying, I need this, this, and this, and I need it on shared hosting. And I said to myself, you can get exactly that on our VPS, but you can't get it on our shared hosting. I won't go and research what the best host is to meet that need, but if they have one in mind, I'll tell them, listen, try our trial out, see if it's gonna work for you. If you don't believe me, give it a try. Do the money back guarantee. I bet you it won't work. Uh, if it doesn't, take that guarantee and go find someone who it will work with. So I'll still try to ask them to try us out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. some of those obvious cases where they just come to us and what they want is just black when we're selling white, for instance, it's like, yeah. I'm not going to waste your time. And I've, t I've told customers that exact line. I'm not going to waste your time. You know, I really appreciate that you've come to us. And if your needs change, check in with me again. Maybe we'll have something that's a fit but I'd rather you get what you need for your website because then that'll keep them happy as a person. It'll keep their business running and all of that great stuff. They'll remember that I didn't treat them as just another dollar sign to put in my piggy bank. And when their needs do change, they will come back to me and they will ask questions. And if it's a fit, they'll probably switch. So exactly. I guess there's no benefit whatsoever being at the end of the, like the 45 day period, 
then having to give money back, but then dealing with the angry customer as well, you know? So yeah, it's, if you know it's obviously black and white from the very start, then, but I think a lot of people just, okay, how can I make a deal from this customer, you know? Um, but yeah, it depends if you're on the hassle a little bit further down the line. And well, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about stages. And I think you touched on this. As we grow, our, our whole position may change course a little bit on how we do some of these things. But as long as I'm a part of the company, I'm going to be advocating for the, the value of people over, you know, just the value of money. Um, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Okay. Uh, and last question, just to finish up. Um, what what are your obviously now you've been in Chemi Cloud for how long did you mention? Uh, just over six months. Just over six months. What are your kind of like long term kind of aspirations? Your long term goals? Are you now planning? Because you went from call center to web hosting. Is this where you see yourself? For uh, I I would like uh, just like those customers that don't want to move. I don't want to move from Chemi Cloud as a person the company is meeting all of my needs. So they're doing for me what I try to do for our customers already. They've treated me incredibly well here. They take my advice and my suggestions. As somebody who's newer at the company than most of the people that I walked into to be with, it, it, it's a huge, huge boost for not only my ego, but my self-confidence to know that the ideas and values I've carried forward have merit and are being listened to and heard. So yeah, Personally, my goals are to stay with ChemiCloud and to grow it from a small company to a medium and eventually a large size company. That would be amazing. I want to take on more tasks and larger projects in business development, which is really my cornerstone. Uh, you know, we've actually recently added a person to that department already. And we're just hoping to, to connect with more people, both, uh, you know, customers and affiliates, anybody that connects with us for something, I want them to have resources at their disposal. If we can do that, and we already have, uh, then, you know, we strengthen those customers, we build our base. So long term, I want to just see that continue. I want to see financial success. Uh, obviously, that's the end goal for anybody in business is to, to do well. I want to be able to take my family on trips. I want to... Uh, be able to afford to do nice things and have a nice new computer. I've got a nice one now, but I want a better one. Um, <laughs> all of those things cost money. So, I mean, at the end of the day, yes, I, I want to see more money. Um, so, yeah, growing out business development, finding new ways to connect with people, new promos and offers. That's what my real, uh, that's what my focus has been on ever since I came on here is to try and build a future. Yeah. Yeah, generally, overall, just from, you know, speaking to you for the last hour, I think anybody watching, including myself, can kind of see how ChemiCloud, just the customer-centric side you guys have is, uh, oh, yeah. it is quite immense, to be honest. It's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, so I think that's one thing. Like, if you take away anything from this kind of meeting, it's just the fact that you guys are doing amazingly, like, in the customer-centric side. Um, and just kind of supporting customers, not really, obviously, like you say, money is important. Money's always important. Growing financially is always important. But also remembering, okay, any unhappy customer is going to go online and leave feedback. You know, it's uh, that's also something you kind of got to just weigh up all the time. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But generally... I think that's the end. We've been going just over like an hour. I think you've answered pretty much all of my questions. Uh, well, that's awesome. I didn't even realize that the time went by so quick. Yeah. Um, thanks so much, Chris, <laughs> for having me. Uh, it was a real uh, eye-opening experience. And I hope any viewers that are, you know, checking this out, if you have questions, reach out to me anytime. Uh, you can reach us uh, on our website and you can ask for John and uh, I'll reach back out to you, everybody. Absolutely. Exactly. Fantastic, exactly. So they can just go to chemicloud.com uh, um, and yeah, just reach out to you guys. And like you say, I think also the important thing as well is that even if a customer can't see the service that you guys can offer, again, just reaching out and you guys can kind of tailor make something for them. 
Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just tell me what you want and I'll let you know if we've got something that will fit that need. And if not, I won't waste your time. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon. Absolutely, Chris. Thanks so much. You have yourself a great day. Well, I hope you found the interview as interesting as I did and learned a little bit more about what ChemiCloud can offer if you decide to partner with them. If you have any questions, then drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to use our link in the description in order to receive exclusive discounts on your web hosting requirements. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.